Prithvi Chandra Hospital, Minori Village, Nepal. Eight-year-old Nikiza is suffering from severe kidney disease. She has been drinking contaminated drinking water for years with disastrous consequences, coli bacteria. After a three-day car ride through rough terrain, Nasrim Patsung was hospitalized at intense pain. Her dehydrated body refuses to function. Here in Manari village, the villagers are once again confronted with a big problem. The water contaminated with arsenic has reached a dangerous threshold. The World Health Organization WHO stipulates 10 microgram arsenic per liter for drinking water. The concentration in the water of Manari village is 20 times higher. Yes, I'm suffering from arsenicosis. Look at me and you can see how critical it is. Nothing has proven successful to treat arsenicosis. Only you people used to look after me. I did lots of treatments for arsenicosis, but no improvements. Even if I had to go to Gorakhpur and spend up to 50,000 rupees, I would do the treatment. But my disease will not be cured. At Prithvi Chandra Hospital, diarrhea diseases, accompanied with high fever, are omnipresent. Too many patients are affected and the cases of disease are piling up. Waterborne diseases are caused by drinking contaminated water. People who don't have safe drinking water facilities are suffering from that. Illiterate village people suffer the most from these kinds of diseases. Moreover, we can see that the level of arsenic is very high in the water of these areas and even people who use tap water suffer because sometimes you can see dirt even in the tap water. People do not only suffer out there in the villages. Even in the hospitals, doctors are fighting with the consequences of contaminated water. Here at Parazi Hospital, we had problems with drinking water from the beginning. Here at Parazi Hospital, we had problems with drinking water from the beginning. Before the supply of aqua drops, we had a big tank for drinking water inside the hospital compound. The tank was filled in the morning and evening shift. Sometimes we had the problem that the tank got empty, and then we used to drink water from the two shallow tube wells which are in front of the hospital. Some patients even used to bring water from their homes, and some used to drink water from that shallow tube wells when the tank was empty. Guneshwar Mahato is a water and sanitation specialist at Nexus Technology Incorporated in Bharatpur. He knows the problem of contaminated water in his country only too well. Manari village is one of the arsenic-affected areas of the Naval Paresi district. Here, 12% of all tube wells contain water with higher levels of arsenic than the Nepal drinking water quality standard. And the water of 26% of the tube wells doesn't even meet the WHO guidelines. Like in the Naval Parasi district, 2% of the tube wells in other 21 districts of the Tarai region contain water with high levels of arsenic than the Nepal drinking water quality standard. And the water of 6% of the tube wells doesn't meet the WHO guidelines. Looking at the water situation in Nepal, 85% of the population, or 90% if we only count the population living in the Terai region, have been seen taking drinking water from tube wells which are contaminated by arsenic, iron, fluoride or bacteria. Almost 1 billion people have no access to pure water. And each year, 1.8 million people, mostly children under five years of age, die of diseases caused by contaminated water. 
Several studies show that two-thirds of the world's population will be confronted with water shortage by the year 2025, and mostly in poor countries. Companies like Nexus Technology Incorporated and WeConnects Limited in Switzerland are working at full stretch to improve access to water with the aid of new technologies and financing plans. They do that in close collaboration with the government and authorities, as well as with local and international institutions and companies. Ram Chaudhari is the owner of one of these companies. He too had been suffering from the consequences of contaminated water in his village for years, and since then is fighting for improved water quality. Uh, in Manari, many projects have come in to solve the problem of safe drinking water, but none of them lead to any solution. Then we thought that we as the young generation should make a decision ourselves and make some attempts. Many NGOs and INGOs helped us. Some of them gave us different filters, but none of that was successful. At last we got help from Nexus Technology Incorporated, Trims Water System Switzerland and WeConnex Limited Switzerland. They gave us a pure and safe filter which now provides us with safe drinking water. And by drinking water filtered by this filter, we are very sure that we will stay healthy. WWF Nepal in Kathmandu has already been fighting for years for environmentalism, biodiversity and pure drinking water. Considering the widespread poverty, the lack of medicine and the contamination of rivers and streams throughout the country, this is an almost insoluble problem. Project manager Ugan Manandbar knows that too. I think the major challenges in the rural areas in terms of access to clean drinking water as well as access to energy is because of poverty. People don't have enough funds and finance with them, they don't have enough money. So the main reason is because of uh, these constraints, they don't have access to drinking water as well as energy access. So I think we have to look into this perspective as to how we can create innovative models you know, through private sector partnership and how we can engage with the private sector as well as communities to overcome these problems. It is our true belief that the biggest challenge on our planet today is to provide access to basic infrastructure services to everybody, to all human beings. Unfortunately, we have not seen many working business models to supply this kind of access to basic infrastructure services also in remote and underdeveloped communities. This fact and our long experience in selling solar-powered drinking water purification systems into these markets have helped us to develop our vision. We believe that with a financially, socially and ecologically sustainable business model, we can provide access to these basic infrastructure services for all people, also in very remote areas. We called our concept that we have developed the Nexus Center. Actually, an infrastructure hub which is located in the core of remote communities. This hub provides access to basic services like sustainable energy, drinking water, safe drinking water, cooling services, sanitation, communication, etc. We have developed this concept in a very modular way to be able to adapt it to every location individually. Successful precursors of the Nexus centers are the so-called water shops, like the one here in Manari village. In a water shop, properly treated water is sold to the villagers at low prices. This is another step to improve the living conditions of suffering people. A social, ecological and economical business model creating local jobs, better living conditions and integrating the population during the planning and implementation of the project. That is sustainable economy. Water treatment with the aid of renewable energy, sustainable water resource management, reduction of emissions, reliable technology and know-how transfer. This is the implementation of a vision. After years of hygienically disastrous conditions of the water, which temporarily resulted in the self-support of patients and employees, the Prithvi Chandra Hospital is now constantly provided with treated water. For the first time, patients receive pure and clean drinking water. So 
Pure water is very important for good health. In a hospital, patients have a lack of immune defense, and if the water is impure, there is a higher risk of getting even sicker. That's why pure water is very important. I think when you look into water, you know, water is something in terms of water is life, water is development, and water can be disaster also. So what we see is the Nexus Center, it combines both energy and water quality for drinking purposes. So this is the time, you know, when we have to start talking about Nexus Centers, because if you come with Nexus Centers, people can have access to both drinking water as well as solar energy power in terms where they can use it for the minimum demand use like charging things and all that stuff but at the same time because local communities in these villages also are looking into entrepreneurship entrepreneurship to different enterprises and ecotourism is one of the aspects drinking water is one of the key concerns the business model of the nexus center has to be pushed with all strength all parties involved agree on that this project has a great future because it bases on a simple structure and hierarchic principles. Each Nexus Center is operated by a local entrepreneur or a group of entrepreneurs. The local project partner Nexus Technology Incorporated implements and manages the Nexus Centers. The local non-government organizations support Nexus Technology Incorporated and the entrepreneurs by helping them with marketing activities and sensibilization campaigns. The technical partners, for instance Trunce Water Systems, lay out and deliver the systems directly to Nexus Technology Incorporated. They also provide support regarding installation and maintenance. WeConnex coordinates the whole project and continuously provides support regarding management, technical challenges, financing and networking. WeConnex will also try to scale and multiply the project within and outside the country. The investors finance the project. They can be split into investors for operational costs and investors for infrastructure investments. The Nexus business model is an ideal investment opportunity for any investor who is not only looking for a financial return, but also a social and ecological impact. The business proposal for Nepal is featuring 100 installations, Nexus installations, for a cost of 7.5 million US dollars, which will be amortized in roughly five to six years with an interest rate on average of 5%. You're not only generating a financial return with this project, but you help 400,000 Nepalese people to get access to the basic infrastructure services that we can offer them with our Nexus Hubs. Thank you. Thanks to the reliability and the little maintenance work necessary, and the automated and simplified operation of the systems, the partners generate an integrating source of revenue as well as local added value and local economic growth. That makes it a lucrative business for local private companies too. Like this, an operator of a Nexus Center gets new possibilities to generate revenue within the system and rises in people's esteem by creating new jobs. We supply the safe water to hospitals, schools and colleges at very low prices by delivery. We supply hotels and banks at a little higher rate than the schools and hospitals. Water is supplied to all local households too. For marketing purposes, we supply this water to several programs like blood donations or sports competitions in the form of a sponsorship. We have also allocated 0.1% to 0.2% of net profit per liter for scholarship funds to poor students. The Truns technology produces pure drinking water in compliance with today's globally applied WHO standards. A Nexus Center or water shop guarantees reliable water quality for the population. This leads to less disease, less expenses for medicine and healthier patients. And 
Since we started drinking this water, we are feeling very well. This water is very tasty and healthy. Drinking this water, we could stop drinking other water. We feel healthier drinking this water. The communities and villages also profit significantly from the availability of pure drinking water. Better living conditions for the population, time-saving thanks to close water places or delivery service, creation of new jobs, increase in productivity or decrease in expenditure on medical care. These are only a few of the aspects of an integral business model that benefits the community and its residents. Thanks to the implementation of pure drinking water, the villagers have stopped drinking contaminated water from the tube wells. I want to deliver a message to all staff, visitors and everyone else that pure drinking water should be used everywhere in the house, outside, at school and everywhere else. This project has created opportunities for employment at a local level. Now when I come to Manari village, I see people who are very happy to drink pure water. People's happiness can be felt everywhere. After a long period of uncertainty and sometimes frustration, the residents of Manari village finally have pure drinking water. Eight-year-old Nikiza is back too. She has been released from hospital just this morning. She is well and has a bright future ahead of her.